back to the Independent Investor Channel. As we monitor the landscape, the volatility is flush. Investors are running for the hills. These are the types of times where you want to make sure that you're being aggressive on uncovering opportunities and no bigger opportunity than a stock that I cover on the channel. I cover it very frequently because I feel like right now uh, it's being uh, it's up against a lot of headwind in the market. In this video, I'm going to earmark 12 things that I think highly on must do to succeed, and I believe that they will. Number one on the list is achieve certification. This is all but a foregone conclusion. Collaborating with Cummins in the industry, Cummins is the one that uh, provides a Hylion with the re-axle for their Hypertruck ERX. If some of the terminology that I throw out there in this quick shot video goes over your head, you want to make sure and visit Hylion.com. They'll explain the system. It's very, very interesting how Hylion is looking not to redefine the truck, rather to focus on those areas that the truck needs to be improved upon and take our technology into the next era of trucking as opposed to relying on what has worked uh, historically being relied upon uh, in the fossil fuels. They're looking to really leverage the opportunity with RNG and CNG and to achieve this uh, certification on their finalized iteration of the RX is going to be a key milestone for the company going forward and we're going to want to monitor that progress uh, as we uh, evolve in the company as they look toward those uh, certification dates. Number two, they need to continue to garner new orders. They've been a little dry on this front. I think it's been, I think there's fear that's been permeated through the landscape and the stock market, and I think it's affecting Hylion and many other stocks out there. Um, everybody's just selling everything, which is the stupidest thing you can do when volatility kicks up. It's amazing how nobody's coming on to social media and talking about being strong in the face of a stock market that's off 25%. Guys, that's normal, okay? You can talk about all the reasons that you want as to why this is or why you need to get out and wait for better days. It's all ill-advised, okay? You need to make decisions that's right for you. And historically, these have been proven out to be opportunities to buy in the face of adversity. Hylion is no different, okay? They've been a little dry on this front, and I'd like to see some improvement on continuing to solidify their order book. Right now sits at about 2,200 mix between reservations and orders backed by deposit, but I think they will continue to build this out as we march toward more of a commercialized stage in phase two of the company as they get out of this uh, product verification and entering into uh, more of a commercialization stage with the company. Number three, they need to build out their current roster. That's what they're doing. Um, I cannot complain with the uh, amount of hiring that uh, Hylion is doing, bringing on that talent in uh, fields that are very, very difficult in technology and engineering. They get an A plus as far as I'm concerned. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to see a build out of the team. We've acquired some of the talent from General Electric and the acquisition of the Carnot generator technology. And I think that's going to be key to monitor Hylion as they build out their team and go from plus 200 to whatever it's going to build out to be uh, as their footprint grows as a company as they look to step into that mass commercialization. All right, number four is to continue to endure the pain that has been succumbed from the supply chain issues. This has plagued highly on and not only the sentiment across the board as it's driven up a lot of things, food, fuel, a lot of things. Companies are unable to procure the parts especially in the semiconductor space, but also more so some of the more simple parts that just are not readily available as they have been in past. And I think I've seen soft spots where we may ease up a little bit on this and any ease up on what has been incurred over the last year and a half is going to be a welcome change uh, to make sure that Hyleon can continue to requisition those parts with good faith uh, and continue to get those in-house to make sure that they can fill those completed orders uh, in the products that they look to deliver. Number five is to solidify their process with the OEMs. And I think if there was any criticism to be had with Hylion, it is the fact that I think they need to be a little bit more transparent on this front. I think the OEM Hylion relationship is such a critical component for what Hylion is doing, where you make the bull case that they're not trying to reinvent the truck. Well, that's exactly what Peterbilt does. And how are those two businesses going to come together, Hylion being a very, very new technology and Peterbilt being an established uh, company that has transcended the decades? And so to really understand more about how they're going to draw this symbiotic relationship between the two companies is still 
really in the onset of, of, of its infancy. And I'd like to understand a little bit more about those companies that have build slots that are already reserved with Peterbilt and how if they wanted to augment their existing build slot with the Hylion solution, how that's going to play out in the real world. Now we have other things like incentives, how that is going to couple into and, and actually get that final product delivered with the assistance of Peterbilt. We just need more clarity on this front and I believe that we will provide, be provided that in the coming months and years going forward. Um, we need to leverage existing relationships and partnerships, and, and those partnerships that we have with Cummins, uh, Penske, Ryder, those companies out there, those networks out there, it's super important um, that those uh, networks are leveraged to make sure that Hylion has a place in their goal of leveraging uh, with those companies as opposed to uh, inventing a product that they're looking to sell to those companies. Um, and looking to more augment the trucking industry. And I think it's going to be super important going forward for them to leverage those existing relationships. And I believe that they will. Uh, the next is to, to validate and substantiate um, their total cost of ownership for the fleets. This is very important. And this is going to come more so uh, in the form of once these fleets take delivery of these original orders, um, is it going to pay benefit to the bottom line for these companies? This is going to be a key driver in understanding, look, whoa, I highly on boast this ability to provide TCO. Now, can they actually follow through with that? And that follow through is not going to be from highly on to suggest, hey, look at this TCO. It's going to rather be the reciprocation of their customers, their actual fleets that are putting these ERXs into the rigor of over the road transport and then communicating uh, those wins back to the marketplace. Remember, a lot of these companies are publicly held companies anyway. And if they can demonstrate to their public that they are not only making this initiative shift to green, that they are also providing bottom line benefit by running alternative fuels and not being so subjected to the diesel market that has been nothing but volatile over the last couple of years, it's going to be a net positive for both. So I think it's going to be incredibly important uh, as these companies start to augment the fleets with these few initial orders. To, to provide that bottom line TCO and to actually pro provide that value proposition to the companies, words will get out, return orders will, will be forthcoming, uh, and Hylion will be the benefactor for that by taking on a new client or solidifying what they've always proposed to be extremely attractive metrics on the bottom line to provide these bottom line TCOs to the, uh, to the Class 8 fleet that they serve. Uh, next is going to be to realize integration. This is key. When we're out there driving on the highways, we are still in an environment here where the trucking industry is dominated by diesel. Guys, this initiative is about moving away from diesel. Um, I'm always one to take a more neutral approach to this. We're not going to supplement for diesel at its in its entirety. Diesel will always be a, a powerful fuel that drives things. But as we march toward a lot of even international initiatives, 2050 seems to be that line in the sand that we're looking at to really look to move away from our exclusive dependence on diesel and look to exploit some of the technology in hydrogen fuel cell using our renewables, um, using compressed natural gas and moving away uh, from this complete reliance on diesel to move our goods. And so to realize this integration, it's going to really unlock that value with the company right now that's being compressed on the stock side. And that's fine. The, the stock can continue to compress. It doesn't mean that it's going to continue to compress until it breaks. We may have that spring effect when this value really can be held no more in secret and the grander audience knows my audience will benefit from having uh, a, a, a forward-looking type of perspective on this and understanding that you've had all kinds of time to look at this as a potential watch list stock or, or even better, a potential uh, investment that you may want to make in the space of, of going green and, and moving toward a more alternative energy space, reducing our uh, greenhouse gas emissions in the number one polluter, uh, which is the trucking industry as a whole. We need to leverage those tax incentives. We know that there's incentives on the fuel side. We know that there's a $40,000 tax credit. We know that there are group discounts as well on the fueling. Some exciting times for those fleets that run uh, RNG, uh, CNG. We just need to get that product into the hands of the fleet. We're a little bit premature now to expect that we're looking at every other truck on the road being powered by compressed natural gas or renewable natural gas or hydrogen. Th those, those fuels 
uh, as we march into a more agnostic future and less dependent on diesel, uh, is, is a ways away. And we need to allow these fleets the ample time to enjoy some of these tax incentives and augment some of that risk that they may be taking on on the onset and allowing some of those proof of concepts to really drive to the bottom line. And we're, on, we're at the beginning stages of, of realizing just that, but I think it's going to be super important to monitor the ACT and the ACF credits, the mandates that have been placed on both the OEMs and the fleets alike to, to, to take a look at this. And um, I think those are fair. I really do. I think the government is saying, look, the time is now to look at these, the technology really has bridged a gap in efficiency and in some cases boasts a better performance than diesel. Now that's yet to be seen here as we're looking at the mass fleets enjoying these, uh, these solutions and putting them into the rigor of over-the-road over the uh, transport, but uh, it, it's yet to be seen whether or not that, that value will be unlocked uh, in the short term or it'll take more of a medium and longer term perspective on this. And, and number 10, we need to continue to uh, pursue different income streams. Highly on boast acquisition of the Carno generator, we've already talked about leveraging those different income SKUs uh, as well as uh, augmenting the uh, trucking fleet with the service that is made possible by the onboard software that highly on boast it's proprietary uh, it's more of a monitoring type of perspective and keep in mind they're not looking just to go under the hood and change the solution from a mechanical perspective they are looking to augment and make a smarter truck and that way we can have preventative maintenance type of flags and allow the driver to and the fleets to have more visibility and the connection between their rigs that they're running an over-the-road transport. And I'll just mention these couple too as a bonus here. We need to improve sentiment around the stock. We really need to shift what has been a terrible stock market in 2022. Really everything has been thrown out. Those companies that have really enjoyed a robust growth cycle over the last 10, 12 years, um, we need a shift in sentiment right now because it's not one of those things to be expected that something's gonna run to the moon in a market right now that no stock or no company is given favor no matter what they're doing. Uh, and I think it's going to need a syst syst uh, systematic and a, and a sentiment change here uh, to really start to realize better days and move from a compression stage uh, to more of an expansion stage. And finally, we'll keep our eyes open on any international and global front. Uh, I believe Hylion is looking to make their mark here domestically, which is smart. And once these achievements are made uh, on the certification side, you can bet uh, to expect that they'll be more positioned to take those global uh, requisites from the company and actually provide the solution on a global scale. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. The totality of the message, guys, if you like the discussion points this week, you can always catch my long video. Uh, this is for those folks that actually are stressed on time and catch the highlights week over week and understanding where I put the focus and area of emphasis on what I feel like is one of the greatest investing opportunities that has come forth in the last 25 years in the market. Guys, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom. I'll catch you in the next video and good luck in your investment future.